All right, so we, we just saw what a, a, a 10 meter asteroid can do, a 50 meter or 100 meter. So what about the dinosaurs? We kind of know something happened there, right? Yes, yeah, so this is the most famous really big impact. You had lots of dinosaurs on Earth wandering around and then something nasty happened. Yes. Now, how do we know this? Well, for all of geology, you've got different layers which are laid out at different times. Yep. And what you can see is the lower layers tend to be the older ones. Yep. And if you look at the older layers um, from the Cretaceous period, mm -hmm. you find dinosaur bones right. and dinosaur footprints. Okay. Um, and you also find lots of other life forms. And then as you go up, you get to younger and younger rocks that were laid down later and later. Yep. And then abruptly, about 66 million years ago, you don't see dinosaur bones anymore. So, so you, so you so see you more rocks further up. But now these rocks, you actually have lost about 75% of all the life forms on Earth. So it's not just dinosaurs, right? Because I think this is where no. everyone thinks that just the dinosaurs got wiped out. It was all types of life. Almost everything. The worst of the loss was actually the, uh, the small marine things that lived in shallow oceans. Ah, OK. And those are much more common because they're in the shallow ocean, they're more, I mean, if a dinosaur dies, its bones probably get eaten by another dinosaur. It's very unlikely that they land in just the right place where they get preserved. Yep. 99.99999% of all dinosaurs did not leave bones behind. Yep. Um, we're lucky that any survived, and many species almost only exist that we've never found any bones from. Yep. But microscopic marine organisms, my f uh, first ever job was working uh, for oil exploration and yeah. with organic geochemists. They would look at rock samples and they'd measure all the tiny microscopic organisms and use it to date the rocks. Oh, ah, okay. And the tiny microorganisms are everywhere, they, and it's very easy to date these things, and most of them died out. Okay. So you look. Just rocks just a bit older than that. You're seeing lots of dinosaurs, lots of organisms, and above, not much at all. And then so, eventually new things like mammals evolved to fill the gaps, and new microorganisms appeared, but there was a dramatic change. There's like an abrupt stop at this layer. Yes. So clearly something happened, and this is mass extinction. There are several mass extinctions in the fossil record. Okay. This one uh, is called the Cretaceous Paleogene or Cretaceous Tertiary Extinction because of the geological periods at either, each end. Okay. Um, but it's the most but famous. It's, it's, but, but it's there not are the other ones, one. like the yep. Permo-Triassic one, which actually killed more species a few hundred year, million years earlier. We just focus on the dinosaurs. Yes, well, geologists focus on all of these ones, but this is the one that's got the, the media the, coverage. Yep. And so what happened? I mean, there were lots of candidates. This is a time when there was a lot of volcanic eruptions. The Deccan traps in India yep. were erupted about this time, which is a huge volume of lava that came out. And possibly numerous other things went on. But it's become clear that this one, probably not the other extinctions, but this one probably was meteorite-induced. Yep. And the reason we think that is what you've got here is the rocks that are older and younger. And you've got a layer in the middle. Yep. Now, in some places in the world, this layer... You can see signs of what looks like tsunami deposits. Yep. But all around the world, this layer, sometimes it shows a bit of ash, yep. but it always shows too much of particularly element iridium. Okay. Now, iridium is not exactly a common no, element. No, right. yep. And it turns out it's pretty rare on Earth, yep. but it's pretty common in meteorites. That's right. And the levels are very high. And there are also some other elements, which again are common in meteorites and other isotopes that are not common on Earth. Yep. And in this very thin layer, 66 million years old, there seems to be a lot of them. So we see this very thin layer of elements that are more common in an asteroid than on Earth. And we see this equally everywhere around the Earth, right? We see this at all, we dig down, we get yep. the same layer, and we see the same thing. Yes. And we've now identified probably where it happened, which yep. is a Chicxulub crater in um, the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Yep. And if you look there, there seems to have been a very big impact. There's not much visible on the surface, but you can see the rocks have been deformed by a shock wave passing through them. Yep. And that produces some very characteristic minerals that can't be produced any other way. So there's a sign of a big meteorite landing at that time. There are signs of tsunami deposits far inland in the US that would come from a kilometer high tidal wave produced by this thing. And then there's this iridium layer all the way around the Earth. That's right, and the, the layers that match this crater and the isotopes match also that iridium layer everywhere. So clearly something happened in Some, this spot around this time. Something like this. So if this is probably a big rock, yeah. we're not talking 10 meters or 100 meters. Yeah, it has meters. to be much bigger. We're probably talking 10, 10 yeah. kilometers, yep. um, which is still a very small asteroid. I mean, it's much smaller than Ceres, right? <laughs> yes. Um, but a 10 kilometer thing hitting, what would happen? Well, here's a time sequence of what happens. If it lands on land, it blows a shock wave, yep. uh, blows some material out, eventually things flow back in at the bottom. 
Yep. Uh, the shock wave goes through the Earth, and huge amounts of debris are thrown into space. If it lands in the ocean, it will probably vaporize a large amount of water, leaving a hole in the ocean. Yep. Then the water will flow in, yep. spouts out, producing a massive tsunami that comes out. Okay. So it's probably going to be some combination of all these things. So it's not just that the there's a tsunami, but you actually get dust that get kicked up into the Earth's atmosphere as well. Yep, but there's actually a problem in working out how it could wipe out 75% of all life on Earth. Yep. I mean, all you need is you one pregnant female dinosaur on the other side of the Earth to survive, yeah. and they can come back. Right. To actually entirely wipe out a species, you have to do a very, very thorough job of getting rid of every single last one. That's right, because you said it's not just the dinosaurs, it's some of those microscopic organisms as well. Yes, yeah, like trying to work out humans on, work, wipe out humans on Earth. If you want to try and do it, it's actually very hard. There's always some monk in Tibet that survives. And yep. so it's two monks, one male and one female. I don't know if female monks are allowed in Tibet, but uh, then the human race can be back as normal within only a few tens of thousands of years. Yep. So, and how did it all the way around the world? I mean, sure, when it hits Mexico, Nothing's going to survive around there. The blast wave's going to destroy things, and yep. the tsunami is going to cover North America. So I can understand there not being anything there. Yep. But something in you know, the other half of the world, Australia, Antarctica, of course, continents were in different places then. That's right. Why would something all the way around the world wipe uh, die out? And this is actually not entirely known. Okay. I mean, one possibility is that this explosion kicked up a huge amount of debris, which then fell down all around the Earth. Because yep. it would have punched hard enough that the ejector coming out would have made it into a, almost into orbit and then fallen down all around. And so one possibility is this stuff is it rained down all around the Earth, yep. produced basically like Chelyabinsk only everywhere millions of times. Okay. And so the entire sky in the world lit up. Okay. And there was so much radiation coming from space that it basically set fire to every forest on Earth at the same time. Okay, so it was essentially a massive event that spread all over. Now, we do see some of this iridium all over the Earth, right? Yes, so we know that the uh, explosion... <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. I mean, we know that an explosion this big is going to produce this yep. debris and produce things all over the place. And maybe this can work. Um, the trouble is that the debris is not all going to land at once. And... As some of the debris falls are going to have a thick layer of dust in the atmosphere, which is probably going to shield us from the radiation from the later ones. Okay, yep. So if you look at the detailed calculation, it's not at all clear it works. All right. But most likely what happened is there's some combination of a global firestorm, which is controversial whether this would have happened, but you would have certainly set fire to an awful lot of forests, and that would have produced a huge amount of smoke, yep. plus all the dust that was blown up. And so the normal idea is that what probably killed things was a equivalent to a nuclear winter. So it wasn't, so it wasn't the blast the, wave yeah. or the heat, so that was probably pretty bad. But you've then kicked up such a layer of dust and smoke that you're not going to see the sun for 10, 20, 30, maybe even 100 years afterwards, yeah. which is going to kill all the plants that rely on photosynthesis, all the plankton in the ocean. And 10 years with no food is a very long time exactly. for anything. I mean, they didn't have supplies of cans to get by with. So it's not just the asteroid hitting the Earth. It's the consequences from it. Yes, I would imagine most dinosaurs in other parts of the Earth would have survived the blast and then died of starvation sometime in the next decade. Now, obviously, with our fossil record, we can't determine, hey, that dinosaur died on a Thursday and then that died two years later. We're lucky if we put it down to even within a million years when most of these things died. Yep. But that's our current theory for what happened with this really big impact. Okay.